I'm using a Lenzar machine. Now you can see these two nubs here on the capsular axis margin. There's one here, there's one here. Now these are depicting the intended axis of IOL placement. Now these marks are made in by the machine itself while doing the capsular axis and they are very very useful in identifying the placement of the toric lens. Now we will go in, pinch the capsular axis, make sure it's broken from all the sides and pull it out. Now this is going to take slightly longer than a normal cataract surgery by flax. The next is I try and do a hydro dissection. Make sure you remove some air bubbles which have been collected behind the nucleus. This will facilitate the rotation of the nucleus. FACO 60. FACO 60. Now I will use a special chopper for this. I call this the Parshuram chopper. It's a very long flank chopper. This will help me. And another thing you need to do is you need to have more tip exposure for operating such a cat, right? Now, lift the corneal wound as you go in. Next step is to try and aspirate whatever little floating cortical matter, though there is no cortical matter in this case. Align the trenching in this case. Such hard cataracts will never have a complete uh, nucleotomy mark till the posterior part of the capsule. Embed the FACO tip. And all the bubbles you are seeing are being released on the posterior part of the nucleus. So, a long flange chopper will help you engage the depth of the nucleus, especially these kind of cataracts you need to be careful of two things. One that the zonules are usually compromised in such cases or they are weak and brittle. So there should be not much separation forces in these cases. So it's a good idea to use a long flange chopper. So when I am operating a black brown cataract. In spite of the fact that I am using Femto, I would like to break the occlusion off and on and ensure a cooling of the sacred tip. And as you can see, the posterior part of the nucleus is absolutely black. I am giving breaks in between. And it's a great 4 class cataract. I run some fluid once the occlusion is broken to ensure that there is a cooling of the inner lumen of the tip also. This will ensure that the probability of a zoom burn is reduced to near zero. So in spite of the fact that I am using a full FACO mode on my Stellaris Elite machine, I am giving gaps in between and letting some fluid run through the FACO tip to ensure that a good cool tip. So there you are, the surgery is practically over. Now we will proceed towards doing an irrigation aspiration. And please note the nubs on the capsular axis. Now we will proceed to do irrigation aspiration. And once that is done, we will place the lens according to the intelli axis or the nubs created by the femto machine in this particular situation. Now we proceed to remove the cortical matter, which of course is very very minimal in such a case. So the intent to rotate the nucleus many times before uh, you start doing a nucleotomy is that now I am trying to polish the plot. I do. So whatever remnant of plaque on the posterior capsule is, we'll try and polish it by doing hydrojet technique. You can watch my other videos uh, on this particular uh, procedure and uh, step. Once we proceed with putting in the IOL, we can probably rotate the IOL and which is thoda sa mere ko ek isko nivan nikalne ke liye by manual chahiye. So to remove this uh, 
intracapsular theoretical matter. I normally don't use a coaxial, but for this particular thing, I would probably want to use a bimanual to remove that small cortical plaque in the. So I will shift to the aspiration port in my left hand and there. So it's a good idea to switch to bimanual off and on, especially when I've caught on a situation like this. Because this kind of a plaque is seldom uh, comes off all by itself. So I've nearly cleared the whole thing up. Let's go. And now you will be able to appreciate those two small nubs on the capsular axis. There is one here and one here. So are these two visible? Yes, they are visible. And this is my alignment for putting in the iron. My rotator. Now, we always will under rotate the toric lens slightly by 10 to 20 degrees uh, to the intended axis. I am using a magnificent EDOF toric iron. Now, the lens is actually allowed to open completely before you go in for uh, proper alignment. So, I probably under rotate it slightly by 10 20 degrees, finish my irrigation aspiration, and once that is done, and finally just align it to the intended axis. So, the, one, the advantage of this intelli axis is huge. Number one, it takes care of the parallax of the movement of the eye. Number two, the accuracy of the alignment is always maintained. Number three is post operatively, it's very, very easy to evaluate that whether your lens has rotated or not, which most or any other system probably we will not benefit because these marks on the capsule axis are permanent. And you can at any time of surgery, post operative period, just dilate the patient and examine, examine the patient on slit lap and find out whether the alignment has moved from the intended axis or not. So once we have ensured that all the viscoelastic from the posterior part of the IL has been removed, you can still see some viscoelastic coming out from the behind of the IOL. Then all you need to do is just align the IOL to that axis that you want. And there you are. I hope you can appreciate that both the nubs are aligned to the toric mark of the IOL. And we have, have a perfect alignment of the IR. Now this is the magic of IntelliAxis. I hope uh, we can appreciate it on the recording that these two knobs are practically just parallel to the intended axis and that does the job. After that, after you put in a toric aisle, always ensure a good uh, hydration of the wound because any collapse in the anterior chamber in the immediate post-operative period will lead to rotation and induce some residual astigmatism. And for the sake of repetition, approximately 10 degree of under or over rotation will result in nearly 30 percent of under correction of the intended correction of the astigmatism. So there we can see that the alignment of the toric lens is beautifully there.